down. That's do you? Needs to be up. No. Needs to be up. Yep. Yeah. Not down. The red button needs to be up, Bob. Your red button needs to be up to the press down. Okay. There you go. All righty. Up the zone, not down the zone. <clears throat> All right, everybody good? Yeah. All right, we will uh, open this meeting for the TDC North Walton Events Advisory Committee in April the 27th, 2016. And we do have a quorum. And uh, so we want to start with the approval of the minutes of our meeting of January the 28th. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, any questions or corrections? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye, scary. All right. The election of chairman, vice chairman, Pamela Watkins. Was I out again? No, I know, I know. I just want to make sure it wasn't a conflict. And of course, the attorney was here, and it seemed like everything was okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I like the mayor part. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I'll make a motion that uh, we elect uh, Mr. Campbell as our chairperson. Uh, uh -huh. Who is our vice chair? We don't have one. Right now it's vacant because it's already Joe Coburn was in that position. Okay. Is there anybody that wants to be vice chair? Robert. Uh <laughs> You know, I don't mind, but now if I cheer, if y'all just need to understand, if I cheer a meeting, I cheer a fast period. <laughs> <laughs> I nominate Robert Nelson for oh vice chair. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> All right, then we go to Carly. I don't right now, but Pamela, I've uh, either left my reading glasses in my truck or in the security thing, and I, I'm useless if I don't go get them. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I, how much but money you, was, you, was allocated to those two events that aren't happening? Uh, the Walton County Road Race was awarded 2500 and Bay Fest was awarded 5000 And how many others were funded? Uh, we have three additional. There was the Chautauqua Assembly that occurred in January. Um, they were awarded 5000 and they ended up spending right at 4900 So all of their funding was allocated to marketing. And then the next event was Marvel of Flight, which occurred this past weekend. So. It'll be a few weeks probably. Oh, see what the reimbursements are. Okay. 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 All right. So we want to go uh, to, uh, to review the scores. Carly? Total of seven event applications, which is 
progress. Last year we had five. This year we have seven. The word is definitely getting out. I had several people call um, for the last minute. They heard about the program, was very interested, but wasn't able to get their application in on time. So I definitely feel like next year we will see a difference. Um, but we have for today, we have a total of maybe seven applications. Um, for each of you guys to review, if you will, um, I gave you guys a score sheet in your binder, but if you will fill out the one that's on the table today, um, I had to revise a name change, um, and I'll explain that when we get to that event. But if you want, we can walk through each of them individually. Um, if you have any questions, or myself or Pamela. And what was different? Um, it is the second entry, the 2016 Back to School Bash. You guys oh, okay, we had 2017. Yes, she submitted two applications. She, she wasn't sure about when our fiscal, so she submitted one for this year and next year. Um, however, the 2016 event actually occurs in October, which will be in the fiscal year. You guys are scoring four. So the correct application is sitting on right in front of you instead of the one in the binder. Have they had that before? They have. Um, last year, they came to us last <coughs> minute and requested funding since there was still money in the program left over. Um, we were able to award them $2,500, and they utilized almost all of it. Did it bring people here? Uh, yes, it did. They, really? um, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but it was a contestant on American Idol, was the entertainment. Yeah, I know he came. I didn't know if it was for this event. It was about uh, 2016. Okay. Event. All right, now when we, when do we call it 2016-17? Is it calendar year? October 1. Yeah, the county's calendar year runs October 1 of 2016 to September 30th of 2016. Okay. Okay. His application was, I'm sorry, uh, I'm talking about Freeport. It was for 15 and now it ended up in 16? No, it was, no, it was for 16. It was 16, but he moved it to November, which is now in our next fiscal. I know it's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's 2018. <laughs> So the first one up for you guys to review is the 7th Annual Marvel of Flight, which will occur April 21 through the 22nd, 2017. they have received funding um, for each year um, of the program. Um, since it just happened last weekend, we don't have any documentation of how well it was attended. I attended the Friday portion. Um, there was quite a few people there. Um, spoke to Ryan. He said he knows for a fact there will be quite a few room nights that he'll be able to record. There was a motor coach from Miami that came up and brought um, some folks that were interested in that type of event, as well as the pilots with the brooms and the vendors. I wanted to mention that uh, I was told by one of the city council members there were 25 people on that coach from uh, Miami. Yeah. Uh, they stayed the whole time, really enjoyed it. There also was a group from the next city in Alabama that the law was going to. 
I can't remember what city it is, Wetumpka or somewhere, I can't remember. But anyway, they are, uh, there were three or four or five of those were here for the three or four days to watch how we put it on to get an idea of how to do there. So, and I was there, of course, for Saturday. Okay. Extremely well attended, uh, very well put on. Um, the coordination with the buses, the way they got people in and out, there was no problem with the parking. It was, uh, it was a really good event and well, well attended and well put on. They weren't up there, and I, I, I don't have them. You just have to trust them. You know what? <laughs> what are your power? I don't know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right. It'll work for you. <laughs> I, hope I have them in my pocket and put them oh, in that little bucket. <laughs> Do they look good? Oh, yeah, you better Hoping hang they on were to peak, those. Bill. <laughs> At least I can see now. So, thank you. What did I miss? Uh, we were reviewing the Marvel of Flight application. Well, and I'm probably going to ask you questions that, that's already been asked. But one of the things, when, we, when we're asked to grade these different areas, do we, do we have numbers that they had projected for the last one and what they have what they turned out to be? In other words, if... Yes and no. Marvel of Flight just happened, so it will be weeks before... But the prior it. year, did how did they do... What I'm saying is if we knew... That was their first year, right? No. Last year. No, the first year they got money. Oh. And so they weren't... This is the second year. In other what words, we have no record of the second year yet. But do we have the first you year You have the record? first year. Yeah, but we don't have anything to compare it to. Well, we can compare it to what you're projecting for the next one, can we not? Certainly. I, I mean, that's just the one, yeah. you know, when and, I started. And it's going to be a phenomenal difference because last year we had horrible weather. Uh, yeah. And uh, and there was a low show that there may have only ended up being, you know, 3,000 people there last year, where this year there's at least double that, you know. Mm -hmm. I've heard the number 6,000. Which is a Monday, correct? On the calendar, it appears. That's what seemed a little odd to me. <clears throat> that would be because I feel like last year it was on a Friday night or Saturday night. Yeah, they're having a concert, right, that, that Monday. evening? So, well, Monday does have a concert. You want me to text her? I can. No, I'm not up to date on everything, but who is Big Daddy Weave? <laughs> He's a uh, contemporary Christian uh, <laughs> music artist. <laughs> is he really big? I never heard of him. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Mayor, I'm sure there's a lot of those we've not heard of. <laughs> <laughs> 
So one day event, so the maximum amount that can be awarded is 5000 and you're asking for some. Um, last year, since it was a new event and we only had a limited amount of funds available, they were awarded 2500 And again, that would be because that was what was left. But, I mean, my concern would be bringing folks from outside being very successful on You're something. Right, yeah, I understand. And for the events in the in the Cheney Act, when we say out of the area, we are we would love for people to come from like Dothan, Pensacola, Bay, but also we realize some of the smaller events may just attract people from South Walton and that's okay to come up for yeah, but this really says out of county, out of the county. They have to promote out of county to try to attract those individuals. And once the program grows, again, this is a fairly new program. Um, Do they have any stats on the first one? Okay. Any more questions on this? Okay. Moving along. Next we have Bay Fest. Um, again, this is the city of Freeport. Event that was originally scheduled for September and it had to be moved to November the 12th, 2016. So the application you are reviewing is the same application that you guys reviewed this time last year. And what was the amount approved for this year's event? 5000 5000 And they are requesting the same amount. have lodging secured in the Juniac at the Best Western for those out-of-town guests and vendors. Um, no, this will be our third one. Last year, um, as far as, uh, it's not for profit, but we made as much money last year as we did the year before, being our first one. Um, and we didn't use any additional funding other than what the city <coughs> provided. Did you did you see much increase? Um, actually, that's the reason that we uh, no, we did not see any increase, and the reason that's the reason we changed the date. It was in September. It was hot as hell. <laughs> Nobody would sit there and listen yeah. to the entertainment. Uh, I was sunburned <coughs> from just sitting there, uh, so we moved it to November for that reason. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Chautauqua Winery Spring Festival. This is a new event for the Chautauqua.
Clockwell Winery. Um, it notates that they have an annual festival every October. And now they want to incorporate a spring festival. Um, so what they have provided is um, they're hoping for the same amount of attendance for their spring festival, which generates around 2,500 attendees. So of course they would not have any research since this will be a first time event for them. Kind of impressive that those numbers happen, really. Yes, ma'am. It's May 6, I did have a question mark on uh, their overnight guest. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, they're saying they have 2,500 attendees, and what, did I see 1,500 overnight? Well, the two. Okay. <laughs> You're going to run out of room? Uh, us and two more cities. reimburse you for and what it cannot so if they want to proceed with those other items spelled out it would come out of their funds and not PDC funds for May 20th, 2017. Uh, this is another event that is approved in this fiscal. However, it hasn't taken place yet. Um, so they don't, we don't have any research to compare it to yet. Yeah, the, the uh, past two years, we had it two years. Uh, now we do draw a pretty large crowd out of Dothan on the car shows, we have a, a, a fairly large crowd out of Destin uh, that come in for the paddleboard races, and uh, and then we have, uh, um, of course, the live entertainment. Uh, this uh, this this year, we're uh, we're having you know someone that was on the Voice and, and another band, and so. Uh, There'll be a number of people, I think, coming out of Mobile just for that event. Uh, but that's all pro you know, projected, you know, for the 2016. Uh, and 
we're talking about 17, but I'm trying to give you as much information on 16, and of course 15 was factual about the uh, the people that came out of Dothan, you know, for the car shows, and there were other other people there out of Panama City as well um, for the car shows, and then we had a large a group doing paddle boards. Very few of them were from Walton County. Very few of them. Okay. And uh, then we had the 5K run, which uh, probably half of that group, probably more than half that group were from out of the county. Yeah, so it's been very productive in that sense, is that the crowds that we do have have been out of the county, or, or, or probably the special events have been out of the county. Now, the people that are doing arts and crafts and food and all that, you know, there's a lot of locals there. Well, you know, I, I go down and greet them face to face every year. Um, I know Gulf Wind, Steve They seem to be awful busy. You know, I've tried to get Mitzi. Now, Mitzi has always encouraged their folks. And they'll, they'll, you know, last year they, they set up as a vendor. And so does Guzu and BOT, BOTE is now in Walton County. Mm -hmm. And they, ought, they set up as a vendor. And, and uh, you know, we pretty much welcome anybody who wants to come with their watercraft. Uh, paddle watercraft uh, to come and set up. Now we're those we're not even charging for their spaces, but uh, so you know we're we're determined that we're going to become a destination for competitors every year, and they'll put it on all their calendars because we have been picking dates that we didn't have that much competition. This year we do have competition. I think maybe in Pensacola with a paddleboard race, and and so uh, hopefully it doesn't affect us because we have reached out a little further and plus we're doing the advertise taking advantage of the advertising this year that we haven't done the last two years and uh, uh, so there's a uh, we got billboards up in Niceville, Fort Walton, Panama City, Crestview uh, we got you know hitting the papers uh, and uh, of course we're going to take advantage of all the free media we can possibly get and then the uh, I've made trips to Blackwater River uh, to every little kiosk the you know, game and wildlife people have so that the people that come there to canoe and kayak will see it and hopefully we'll get some of them over here but anyway it's uh i think this year will be a lot more telling just pray we have good weather I'm hoping when we get our uh, Amtrak stop here, we'll have somebody that's renting bicycles, paddle board, cars, uh, <laughs> Uber. <laughs> so we're going. Uh, I think that the Yolo's got more than the bicycle rentals they have in the paddle boards, you know. But uh, we we welcome them, and uh, trust me, I do reach out to them. I get in their face every year, and not in a bad way. <laughs> In a begging way. Hmm. So. Right, we'll move to the next event, which is the Nick's Kids Catfish Tournament, scheduled for July 22nd, 2017. Uh, this is an annual event, but it's the first time they have submitted an application for funding. it is held in July, you will see on the score sheet, it will not receive any points um, in the category for commitment of shoulder season. It is a one day event, so they could request funding up to 5000 and they are asking for 3000 um, Anticipated number of attendees is 100 and of those they expect 50 to be out of town. I love an optimist. <laughs> 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 I got a question mark about those two. Yeah. Yeah. Is that um, 
event attendees or registrants in the tournament? I think it's both because it says it does draw people to just observe the weigh-in. Right. So I think it's people in the tournament as well as people that may show up to watch the weigh-in. I've never been to one, but I do know there is one in South Walton that does draw a lot of people for mm -hmm. weigh-in. I don't know if that's the case, um, but usually Eats on the Bay is a very popular restaurant for locals, so I'm not sure. I was thinking that that number would actually be a little bit higher. I feel like there were, with the kids and their parents, just the number of registered kids and their parents last year, it would have exceeded that 100 number, so that seemed a little, yeah. Honestly, it struck me as a little bit low. It doesn't say, but maybe the registration is maybe half of that number. I don't know, I'm just guessing at this point, but to your point. Um, what do they ask you for? Uh, 3000 <coughs> Roundup Fishing Tournament scheduled for May 20th, 2017. Um, again, this is an annual event for them um, new to um, our program. Very similar to the other one, attracting 100 individuals day event um, so they can request up to 5,000 and this event they are asking for 5,000. And it says this event targets men between the ages of 30 and 55. This, uh, are these two events put on by an individual? He has an organization that runs the tournaments. Trey has one? <laughs> okay. Carly, um, this is the first year we've had um, applications requesting more money than budgeted. So do we need to decide now how that's going to work as far as allocation? Is it going to be, or are these going to be scored and we're going to do it as a percentage or? It will. It will be based on the scores. That is. But are they just going to be, are they just going to be ranked and start at the top till the money runs out or are we going to do it as a percentage of the pool and allocate? based on scores back against the total. We're going to take your Who carries the most weight? Well, if we mimic the South End program, like you said, this is the first year we've had um, requests higher than the funding. It is, like you said, it's a percentage based on your score. Will everybody get money? Well, I think that's what Robert was asking. Will everybody get money or will the five get money and two not get money? No, it'll be based on your scores. I understand that, but will everybody get some money no matter what? Well, if you guys, 
I'm going to make up an event because I don't want to okay. just say Lulu was fake tests. If you guys scored them all at zero, then no, they would not receive funding. But if you guys scored at all seven of these in the 70s, 80s, 90s, then yes, they would all receive some type of funding based on their score. Even if they got down lower than 70, 89. As long as they've got a score, they'll get some money. Well, I think Robert's question is right on. What, what, do we just start with the top until we run out of money, which to me seems to be, to be the logical thing. Well, I'm just trying to find out I, if, I, if we give them a score, will they get a percentage of the money allotted no matter if it's $500? Or are we, like uh, Bill said, will we just say, if we run out of money by the time you get to five, percentage-wise, the bottom two won't get anything, even yeah, though they have a score. Case, no. Okay, everybody will get something will if they're scored. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's what I want to find. But they may not get what they applied for. Exactly. No. They may get 2500 or 3000 if they requested this five. This is the first year that we okay. had more applicants. And, and, that, and that happens. And we still have the, you know, as, as these events don't take place, yeah. that money's there. And since it's been allocated, it can, I assume, the, the, the percentages, it changes the pot. Or once y'all no, make the approval, the approval's done. Well, I'm talking about if the event just doesn't occur at all. Then yeah. Um, and there may be some okay. Um, okay. That you that um, basically up to our executive. Okay. Because they didn't go. Now I graded mine based on what was written on paper, and I'm, I'm not real happy with it. Uh, <laughs> Gotta get a blank. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you know if it's your if you right. Okay, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Well, I'll scratch it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> scratch that hundred off of there. Yeah. <laughs> not a hundred, I can tell you, it's not even you, close. Do you want a new score sheet? Uh, it's gonna be pretty messy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Bagby told us at the first meeting of this board that I attended that this be prepared. This was going to happen one day. It would just be probably two yeah. or three years down the line. And so now it is happening. How much money was in that group? Catching up to do. We got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> yeah. They can request. They can request higher amounts down there, though, too. Have, larger marketing budget. And they have signature events. I know huge turnouts. Yeah. I'm trying to think now. What does this do? Because there's two events I can't weigh in on. Uh, what does that do to our numbers? When I say our, the city numbers. Whenever I have to bail out of two events. It doesn't affect it because it's an average based on the people who can score. So if there's only five people, it would be divided by five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As you know, we have a going to send out an email on that? Um, it's in our submission. Okay.
I hope you can too. Where are you going, Megan? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Golovin season opens in July. I got so. you. <laughs> okay, you're <laughs> From all that public. <laughs> On there we go. I hope you'll bear with me for a few minutes. I have some comments and some questions and some ideas. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Diane Pickett. I lived in Defuniac full time for many, many years, and during that time, worked a great deal with Pam, who is just fabulous. So. Uh, if you love her as much as I do, you'll give her a big hug. Uh, I moved away to California, lived there 10 years in Santa Barbara, and came back a couple of years ago. I'm here part-time. I have residences in other states, so I'm here just for a short time, be leaving in June. Um, I'm all about tourism and defuniac. And I've got a couple of things that I have not talked to the mayor about, but I would like to, to find, get your thinking on it. I'd like to start a heritage tourism for North Walton County. I know we see a lot about ecotourism and all of that sort of thing, but Defuniac is tailor-made for heritage tourism. We have a tremendous heritage here. Um, in thinking of that, one of the issues, uh, Mr. Mayor, would be developing a training program for docents, people who could tell our story to visitors. My idea for the heritage tourism would be to market to tour bus companies. I did that for the years that I lived here, and it was quite successful. Uh, all of this stuff I've done as a volunteer. Um, I don't have those contacts, those records anymore, and we'd have to go back and, you know, revisit that issue. I would expect and need help from the TDC in re-upping that program. And the immediate question is, could we get on your website with some sort of information for visitors? If you want to come to Defuniac and you need a docent, you call here. Would that be a possibility? That, that's a question. Uh, Defuniac is a small town of 5,200 people. It hasn't gained population in 55 years. But with the mayor's help, I think we might drag them over the line. Um, I think heritage tourism would be very, very good for the entire county. Yes, sir. I, I th sounds like a good idea. What, who would train these docents? I mean, it, it seems, I think we've got some folks right here locally that are very knowledgeable about the history, but it seems to me like you'd need a core group of 
volunteers, or how would that work? Well, I have two ideas on that. The first one is to bring Dean DeBolt from the University of West Florida, who is an expert on the history of Defuniac Springs, and have him do a few training programs. He's been very good in working with me over the years for free, but if we could get some kind of grant to maybe offer him a little money to do consistent training programs. The other avenue I considered was the Heritage Museum. They have a lot of volunteers down there. Also, uh, Mr. Mayor, if we could perhaps get someone to teach a class in the high school on the history of Defuniac and its Chautauqua heritage, then those kids could be prime uh, step-on guides. I used to be the step-on guide for the bus tour, so I know what it takes. And that would generate a little income for them and encourage them to want to participate in the program and give us a larger source. Um, you know, I'll talk to somebody on the school board about that. But those are some avenues that I see in developing that program. And I think with that, we could get visitors from lots and lots and lots of places uh, for our heritage tourism. In addition, I was at the meeting yesterday or the day before on the uh, Highway 90 historic signage, and I think we could probably plug into that a little bit. So the question is, if we were to develop a heritage tourism program, two things we'd need would be some advertising money and some help on the website. Could that be a possibility? I would sure think it would be for, I mean, that, that would bring a lot of people from out of town, would it not? Oh, yeah, it would. That all be from out of town. Yeah, I mean, that's... Because that's the, the local people either know it or they don't care. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh-huh. Pam, do you do you have any sense of how how many people take take up that walking tour in Defuniac? It's a nice little brochure the community has developed, but I personally don't see that as the answer that we need. Uh, I have a house on the circle, and I see people kind of strolling around. They're looking for something else to do, and they need specific guidance. And the only way to really get them into our shops downtown is to tell them that's where you go uh, and have specific things in the shops for them to do. And I want to talk to you about frozen yogurt. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they, they need – Talk to some folks about getting the lake down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it ain't working on my side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look at it every morning, so I know. Um, so I think we do need some personal touch for a tourism program. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. You know, when you go someplace out of town, you can look on your phone and say, oh, yeah, well, there's a guide that I can get to do X, Y, and Z, <clears throat> and I can get them on my time frame. So... That does make a big difference. I'm thrilled to know that you're still a member of the uh, American Coach Association. We'll be talking. Uh, I'm going to be leaving in early June and won't be back until November, so I'm trying to push all the buttons I can before I leave. The other thing I want your input on, um, last year I started a new event for Defuniac, and we call it the Pig Roast. Uh, it, it generates income for the city of Defuniac specifically targeted for the restoration and preservation of the Chautauqua building. This year, with about 200 attendees, we raised $9,200. Uh, I underwrite all the costs for that, and all the income goes to the city. They're extraordinarily cooperative in helping with the setup and the takedown and all of that sort of thing. Uh, the question is... Would the city be eligible for some sort of marketing grant to expand the reach of the pig roast? 
Now, I'm going to be 76 years old next month, and this thing is a lot of physical work for me. Just going and buying the supplies and things is, is a lot of physical work, loading, unloading, et cetera. So I'm wondering how many years I will personally be able to do this. Uh, our Chautauqua building is undergoing a renovation, and we need to continue this process and really bump it up so that it makes a significant amount of money. Uh, would this event be eligible for some sort of marketing grant from the TDC so that the, and the money would go to the city, not me, uh, so that the city could expand its advertising to Dothan, Crestview, Florella, Berriana, wherever. I try to make this a personal event so that it's not just, you know, barbecue under a tent. Uh, therefore, I open my home. We have specialized entertainment on stage that you don't find just everywhere. So it's a little bit of an unusual but highly personal event, and I'd like to keep it that way as long as we can. Uh, I have been limiting it to 200 people. I think with the experience we could probably do 300 next year. Uh, the city very much needs the money. Would this event be eligible for a marketing grant? If I could say something, um, Diane, right now, the way I understand it, and I'm just getting, trying to get some clarity on this, all of these sound like very good ideas, but we're limited, aren't we, to this board, to voting on this Grants don't come to us. We're working on that, and we have had some volunteer effort by Dr. Robert McKnight who has been extremely helpful to the city in getting some of those. The problem is he's tired of working for free, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to find money, first of all, to hire him for those grants because he's told me personally, it's over now. You know. uh, so he's very, very good at that, but we have to find money to continue to pay him. If we were to fill out the application, for this pig roast thing, does it fall within the guidelines? Possibly. However, um, you would have to submit the application for the 2018 because 2017 just closed and that's what the committee just scored and reviewed. Um, so this is a one-time good deal? It is. Okay. Um, Okay, well, I'll put that on my calendar. But you think this might be an eligible event? Possibly, without the application. Okay, well, we'll work on it for next year. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. <clears throat> so moved. Second. All right, we're adjourned. Do we leave these books here? Um, we leave these. We leave these, right? Yes, sir. If you don't mind. Thank you. 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 Thank you.